Yeah, tell me about it. What uh, what were the emotions like? Was there a moment that kind of got you emotionally? You know, I was just trying to get there, first of all, because I work on Sundays at, you know, Sunday Countdown in New York City. So I was getting there. My my wife and my son were racing there. My girls were playing. They had a game uh, at Brown University, so they came in on Monday. So I think maybe just the uh, the adrenaline of just trying to get there in time for this luncheon that we had had on Monday with Mike Holmgren and some of the other Ring of Honor members and executives from the Seahawks and some of my teammates, uh, maybe that didn't allow me to kind of uh, – process it too much but then they kind of surprised me with a couple surprises once i got there and yeah there were a couple of times where i was i was just basically trying to hold it together and i really thought i'd be in danger of uh you know tearing up or crying or something you see people do that sometimes once i got to the stadium but for whatever reason when i walked into that stadium the the emotions that i was feeling were more like i want to strap it up and go play than uh necessarily like getting sad or something like that so it was it was definitely exciting to be back in that stadium and um you know i don't even know if i can replay it all but it was it was neat it was very neat i don't want to say they could have used you but you know maybe they could have <laughs> used you based on scoring 10 points in the game were, were there people you saw that you know that you hadn't seen in a long time who stood who who'd you get a chance to see while you were here yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty wild. Like, there, I didn't know who was going to be there. Ironically, some of the – basically everybody I mentioned in the speech, um, you know, there's some guys that maybe weren't there. But there were some guys that I, – I ran into Big Play Babs. I ran into Marcus Trufant. I ran into, you know, Lofa Tatupu. It was, it was really great to see some of the people that, uh, you know, maybe you don't hear as much about, but they definitely had an impact on our team in terms of, like – um, obviously making plays on the field, but just in terms of the camaraderie on, on the on the sidelines. And then even, you know, on my way to go do Touchdown City in, in interviews like that, I went right by the locker room. And as I'm walking by the locker room, it's, it's uh, a lot of the staff. You know, people I don't think realize, especially as much turnover as there is on a football team, players who are in one spot for a long time, you become, really, you become family with equipment guys, athletic trainers, the team doctors, PR. Like that becomes part of your family and so seeing those people was uh was super special and you know people probably don't know the names but uh anybody who played in Seattle mm-hmm. ever knows the names and knows how just incredible those 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 people are. Well, and not everybody got a chance to hear it. Obviously folks at the game did. If you were watching at home, you didn't get to see or hear the whole speech. Here's just a moment or two of Matt. We gave everything we had and you gave everything you had. The 12s, Seattle, the 206, the 253, the 425, the 509. 12s here in America, abroad, Hawaii, Canada, everybody. (laughs) We did it together. Wow. Hey, what's up? You're excited. Here's it. Hold on. Let me play a little bit more. Here's here's a little more from Matt. Not only are we going to New Hampshire, Tom Harkin, we're going to South Carolina and Oklahoma and Arizona and North Dakota and New Mexico. We're going to California and Texas and New York. And we're going to South Dakota and Oregon and Washington and Michigan. (laughs) And then we're going to Washington, D.C. to take back the White House. Yeah! Wow. I, I don't know who that is. You got so, carried away. Uh, I don't know who that guy was. That's Howard I, I Dean. You, yeah. no, I'm not sure I know who that is. Well, but, he did that uh, scream, and that was the end of his Is he run. like a politician? He guy? was, 2002. Okay. He he made that yeah. scream, and that was... But there was one more clip of Matt that I, ah! I don't know if you heard. Did oh, you, you hear this, this one? one? No. We will not go quietly into the night. <laughs> we will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. It's definitely him, I think. Yeah. Are you planning to run for office with this? I don't know who this one is either. Who actually I know who that is? I don't know. President right How there. do you not know? All right. Who is that? I don't know. That's Independence Day, man. Come on. No. Okay. All right. That, Jeez, like, there's a whole like period of Matt's life that was missing while he was playing. I get it. Uh, like, you're pretty busy, much. busy watching film during that time. My biggest fear when I started saying that, I was like, I'm going to leave an area code out or screw it up. <laughs> I haven't lived here in a while. I'm just, I, I know the 509. I know that one for sure. Right. But, and I still have a 425 area code cell phone, so um, <laughs> no, it's cool. I mean, listen, I mean, I, I, you know, part of part of being the quarterback in Seattle, you get a ton of fan mail, and you get fan mail from all over the place. You know, mostly, you know, I would say mostly the overseas fan mail is from people in the military 
and they're usually taking a picture with a 12 flag or with your jersey on or something Seahawks over in who knows where. And, um, and, you know, those are special. And the amount of gifts that I've received from people in the military that are, you know, basically it's like a little reprieve when, when they get to watch together with their teammates, their teammates watch their favorite team at home with some of their other teammates against their favorite team at home. You know, watching NFL football for three and a half hours on a Sunday is, uh, you know, it has, you know, they've shared how that much that men- means to them. But sure. Um, really, anywhere you go. I mean, whether it's a trip to Alaska, Hawaii, Canada, uh, you, you hear from fans everywhere. So um, I don't know. The home field advantage to me in Seattle is something that was there once way before I came. When I got there, we didn't even have our own stadium. And then we developed something special that yeah, so in my off seasons, quarterbacks would say to me all the time, man, I hope we don't have to play you up there next year.